Uh, Alicia, you were in the, you were in the Kansas Senate. Is this your sixth? No, oh, you've been in there four years. I'm sir. I'm in the middle of my second term, so I've actually served for six years. Okay. Uh, and you were, you ran for office your first term. You were appointed. That's correct. Can I had just served a four-year term on the Kansas State Board of Education. That's right. Uh, to which I was elected in 1980, and that term was up in 1984. And at that time, that I ran for the. Senate for the first time. There was no incumbent in my Senate yeah, district. That's what, I was going to ask you. what made you decide to run for this position besides the fact there were, that there was no incumbent? Well, you know, I don't know, and you're not the first person who's asked. <laughs> but um, I, I guess I had, I had been a part of the legislative process in that I had been the legislative liaison from the State Board of Education. Um, I had also been a volunteer lobbyist, and so some of the people around the state house knew me. And believe it or not, some people went back as far as to when my father served in the legislature in the 50s from one of the house districts in Topeka. And I suppose uh, because of, of, of those experiences and that involvement, uh, the uh, Senate president and vice president at that time, um, who were Ross Doyen and Charlie Angel, uh, called me and made an appointment with me and told me that they did not believe that the then incumbent Senator Ron Hine was going to be running for another term in the Senate and asked me if I would consider running. Uh, I, I got home and I, I called my husband. I said, John, you're never going to believe why they want to take me to lunch. <laughs> and he encouraged me. Hmm. Uh, I think it was it, it came at a good time. Uh, my, my, our son was already at KU and our daughter was going to be going. And uh, so in that respect I didn't have any direct day-to-day -day motherly responsibilities. Hmm. And uh, I just guess I became interested and was encouraged and how early in the year did all this happen? This happened in the spring. So you had quite a while to campaign and plan your first election campaign? Or? Well, from uh, uh, Ron didn't announce that he wasn't going to run until about June or late oh, May. That's so, really late. Uh -huh, and then at that time there was a question how many Republicans might be running in the primary, mm -hmm. as it turned out. I, I was the only one, but there was a lot of activity. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what kind of a campaign, and how did you plan it, and tell me a little bit about your first Well, election. the first thing that I did was to call uh, a number of my friends and acquaintances and, and, and visit with them about my interest and got a, a lot of good information about the things they thought were important for me to do and the things that they thought were important as far as issues were concerned. Uh, I, I did quite a study on the issues um, and I got, then I got a steering committee of people that I that I had worked with as a volunteer, because that's been my background mm -hmm. really, is working as a volunteer, and uh, people that I felt that were fairly diversified in, in terms of their interests, and we just sat down, laid out a campaign, and, and, and I pretty well stuck to it. Well, that's interesting. Uh, what were some of the organizations that these volunteers came from, that you had, organizations you had worked for, and then the people who helped in your campaign? Well, uh, the, the Junior League in, uh, in Topeka was probably my primary source of, of, of volunteer assistance, but I ha had also uh, been on the, the uh, Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors and, uh, and uh, Red Cross, uh, Family Service and Guidance Center, mm. Lawrence Crittenden Services, Mental Health Association, to name a few, and, and uh, of because of some of those uh, 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 for instance, particularly in the social service agencies, I was able to to then get some people that had a per interest perhaps that were not ones that I came into contact with day in and day out. They brought some diversity, mm -hmm. uh, men and women, 
my my interest in running for the Senate was, or maybe I should say my concern, was the lack of economic growth in Kansas. I, I am a, a, a very much of a pro-business hmm. uh, lawmaker, and um, I, I, had, I had some concern. I had some concern about how we were structuring our education system to uh, prepare young people to enter the workforce at that time. And of course now the, the nation uh, is getting quite a bit of publicity, is getting quite a bit of national publicity mm -hmm. on workforce preparation. But I had those concerns at, uh, at, at that time. Uh, so I, I made that very clear in my and, and I was and I was in, and I was also interested, although I'm a woman, um, I was interested in issues as a person, and and I guess that so that's um, I, I kind of went from the people that I chose to surround myself with in terms of policy, know-how, the feel in the community, and so on. Um, but my 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 interest was to be that preparing young people, uh, providing economic growth, and to, uh, so that would assist all of us, uh, whether we were from uh, representing the workers, representing the employers, representing women's concerns, social concerns, simply to generate the revenues that would allow us to meet some of those social concerns. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, you said you had a had a plan and stuck to it. What were some of the facets of this plan? What were some of the activities that you engaged in during your campaign? Well, of course, my my number one priority was to become uh, versed in the issues. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, I I felt that I had fairly good recognition, uh, name recognition, at least in. In, a, in uh, the southwestern part of my district. My district covers all of southern Shawnee County. Uh -huh. And so in the south, uh, southwest part of the district, I felt I had a fair name recognition. I had been um, a lifetime Topekan, and I had been on a ballot before. Uh, but <clears throat> I wanted to meet with as many people as I possibly could meet with, and made a concerted effort to do that. Uh, I wanted to uh, develop my campaign literature to show me in some of the roles that I had played uh, in my adult life. And so we did some work to try to get together some old photographs that were not in my possession at all. <laughs> uh, and, and we were successful in doing that. Just to, to illustrate uh, what my involvement and, and my caring had been for the community and my ability to provide leadership and make decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, the door-to-door -door campaign was the most important part of my campaign and I personally dedicated myself uh, mostly to that with uh, a great deal of help from my husband and some help from volunteers also. Well, that's quite an undertaking when you have a whole senatorial case. That history. is correct. How many? Approximately how many voters uh, vote? In I'm district. sure that any other lawmaker, elected official, could tell you exactly how many voters <laughs> she <Nope>. had <laughs> and exactly how many votes she got. But I can't. But I can't tell okay. you that. <laughs> That's okay. Now, has your district remained pretty much the same? No, my district has grown. Southern Shawnee County has, and and particularly in the Southwest, mm -hmm. has grown more than any other uh, Senate district in Shawnee County. Uh, the Senate will be reapportioning right. itself uh, before she the end of my term of office. I serve on the reapportionment committee, and um, the, my district, which is the 20th senatorial district, will be reduced some, and the other two Senate districts will be expanded some. Even looking forward from 1992, the projection is that that uh, southwest part of Shawnee County will be the fastest growing. Hmm. That's something, the fastest growing district. It's kind of frightening, too, what they might, when they might decide to draw some lines and everything like that. 
But you wouldn't be, yours would be shrinking then instead of Mine, yes, mine would be reduced. Geographic so. area would be That's shrinking. That's correct. Okay. Uh, what issues, you mentioned issues a couple of times, what issues were important during your first campaign? And, uh, what did you identify as? Well, I was elected uh, right prior to the legislative vote on lottery, paramutual, liquor by the drink, mm. reappraisal. So taxes and uh, the revenue generating uh, issues well, that's interesting. You were right before all of those. That is correct. Were on the that is correct. Mm. And uh, as you know, there were at that time uh, many diverse views on uh, reappraising property. And <laughs> same as there are after the fact. It, I, I guess now that it has been done, I certainly have a better feeling and perspective for why it had been such a volatile issue prior to my uh, being elected to the Senate. At the time I was running, it really perplexed me why the legislature would not act and wait and allow the courts to act mm -hmm. for it. Uh, but as I say, in hindsight, I can understand why the legislature had so much trouble find, getting an agreement and was so reluctant to mm -hmm. act. It's a big issue, isn't it? Well, like, who were your, uh, did you have uh, one Democratic opponent? I did. What, did they have a, did they have a, a primary uh, no, race? Or? No, the, uh, the, uh, prime, the Democrat opponent had announced uh, her intention to I run quite her early. Was. Her name was Lori Class, mm -hmm, and she would announced her intention quite early, actually had had her campaign uh, materials prepared by the time that mm. I announced that I was going to run. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, now, after you were elected, uh, did you know some legislators, some senators, or did you have a mentor or someone that sort of helped you get started and get on the right committees? And that well, as I indicated earlier, I had um, I had, had done some work as a volunteer lobbyist uh, in the legislature, primarily for. Uh, children's organizations, uh, but also had been the legislative liaison from the State Board of Education. And uh, therefore, I knew quite a number hmm. of, uh, of senators at that time. I did, uh, though, uh, upon being elected, uh, and at the time that the Senate was organizing following my election, I, I made it known what my interests were and uh, I also uh, tried to get advice from former legislators. One of my mentors, and I would call him a mentor, for instance, was Dick Rogers. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, it's interesting. Well, now, uh, was he still in the Senate then? No, he, no, he wasn't. Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't think he was, I can't remember exact times, but it didn't seem like he was. He would still be helpful because he would know the people who were. Uh, what committees were you appointed to then? Well, I was uh, appointed as Chairman of Administrative Rules and Regulations, which certainly nobody aspires to, but I must say that it was certainly a learning experience. I was appointed as uh, Vice Chairman of the Education Committee and uh, then appointed to six other committees in the legislature, which included, uh, as I recall, assessment and taxation, uh, public health and welfare, local government, reapportionment. Oh, and I, I, I'm not sure that I have mentioned all of them, but, um, but the, the eighth one came after I had been elected to the Senate, as, as, I, as I indicated. Uh, my my focus, my interest, was uh, to, to, to try to bring about some economic growth in the state. And I was a bit surprised uh, that in, in, in the state of Kansas there was no legislative committee on economic development. In other words, there was no focus at all in, in the legislative arena. Then at that time, the Department of Economic Development was 
located in an area where it could hardly be found. There was so very little visibility and no state strategy for, for, for economic development. And I had many visits and wrote a formal letter uh, to then President of the Senate, Bob Talkington, expressing mm -hmm. my concerns and what I felt that we should do to try to address some of those concerns. And one of them was to, to create a legislative committee, committee on economic development. That was, uh, that was done, and um, it, it was at that time a joint House-Senate commission. Uh, it was not technically a legislative committee, and five people were appointed from the Senate and five people were appointed from the House. Of the five people from the Senate, three were members of the majority party, which is the Republican Party. And, um, and because of my interest and, 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 and my efforts to get this started, I was one of the three that was appointed from the Senate which was quite something because the other two represent uh, yeah. much more experience and roles and ways and means and, and, and in some leadership areas in the Senate. Well, it's exciting to be on a committee that's just forming like that too and have some input. Are you still on the same committees pretty much? There, no, there has been some change. The Senate did reorganize after mm -hmm. my first term, at the beginning of my second term. At that time, um, I expressed an interest in uh, being on the Ways and Means Committee. Uh, I then became the only Republican senator from Shawnee County. Uh, at that time, Shawnee County had no member mm -hmm. in the Senate Ways and Means Committee, and I did a little work and visited with my colleagues and so on. And, and uh, the first thing when the Senate reorganized, I was elected by my colleagues to the Leadership Committee, which is called Organization, Calendar, and Rules. And uh, we, what, what that committee does is, is uh, we, we create and submit to the legislature the rules of the Senate. We also uh, appoint committees. The Senate, it's a seven-member committee. And uh, I campaigned for that committee and was elected by my colleagues, so I was in a position oh. then to make some committee appointments. Uh, Ways and Means, of course, is the most coveted committee mm -hmm. in the Senate, and uh, I had to balance then that against what perhaps some of my appointments had been, and which were also highly coveted, such as my vice chairmanship of education. Uh, there are always way more people who want to be on that committee than there mm. are slots. So I, I did a little trade-off, but I did, did, did achieve um, the membership on the Ways and Means Committee, for which I was very glad. I uh, passed on uh, the uh, chairmanship of administrative rules and regulations and uh, assumed the chairmanship of labor industry and small business. Mm. I guess the other committees that I'm now serving on uh, Besides my uh, labor industry and small business, which I chair, I became, became vice chairman of, of, of the really banking and insurance committee. It's mm. called financial institutions, but it's Those are all essentially banking, yeah. uh, banking and, and uh, insurance. Um, the others may be essentially the same. I, by assuming ways and means, I dropped tax because they meet at the same time. Labor and industry meets the same time as education. Uh, financial institutions meet the same time as, as local government. So mm -hmm. I'm, I did make some changes. Mm -hmm. Well, what bills have you introduced and sponsored during the... Oh, well, now that, that I'd have to get back in my <laughs> file. Oh, you can show I'm everybody not, some of them. I am I'm afraid I am not prepared to do that. Uh, one of the the first bills that I co-authored, and I normally I try to um, join with other senators, mm -hmm. not always all Republicans, some Republicans and Democrats, uh, to to co-sponsor legislation. There may have been there may perhaps have been a few bills that I have uh, sponsored on my own, but generally join with others. And I, the first one I do remember. And it uh, was a 
a bill that was introduced as a result of uh, instances in Kansas where asbestos had been removed from buildings, mm -hmm. either put in a trash bag and just tossed out, or dumped in dumpsters. And uh, so that, of course, there's a lot that's been done since then, and federal regulation has come in to do much of what we did in um, 1985. But we did set up a regulatory process and, and a standards that must be met for for the removal of asbestos, and I'm afraid that the bureaucracy has taken off since then. <laughs> well, somebody had to enforce those rules and rights too. Well, we also at that same time we also had to allow uh, school districts the ability to do some bonding mm. uh, in in order to be able to pay or that asbestos removal, because as you know, a lot of that has been done um, at, in schools. So that there were there were several pieces of legislation that were involved there. Um, I'm I'm afraid at this point I I am just I'm absolutely stymied. But I have I have uh, I have introduced bills in the area of tax. Uh, uh, I this past session I co-authored a bill that would have put a cap on the amount of, that uh, local governing units could levy against property to fund uh, local services. I have introduced a bill that uh, better that uh, made well provided some uh, better definitions in reappraising property. I was concerned with some of the appraisal work that had been done here in Shawnee County, uh, both on uh, commercial property and on residences representing uh, Southern Shawnee County. An, a, an important part after reappraisal was uh, the area uh, 21st and Wanamaker Road, or really all the Wanamaker corridor and I had uh, been brought to my attention that a number of homes, uh, particularly on 21st Street, had been appraised at commercial value. But on the other hand, the city council had before that uh, passed an ordinance that said there would only be two commercial access roads. And so some of these homes that were not, did not even have commercial access had been appraised at commercial values and I first tried to remedy this through the Shawnee County appraiser, but uh, had no luck there, so introduced legislation that uh, alleviated that problem. Mm. <laughs> and uh, then another piece of tax legislation, as I remember, uh, provided a more specific definition of inventories. Um, I have, I have uh, co-authored a number of education bills and a number of uh, bills of concern uh, to social policy, <coughs> uh, such as um, a recently enacted Senior Care Act that allows people to remain in their homes. Oh, yes. Uh, that is, that's one that comes to my mind being a recent piece of legislation. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was that passed the last session? Or was it the year before? The year before, yeah. Probably just one in effect about a year ago. Yes. The yes. Or something, yeah. well, that's and a of lot course, of I, needless to say, have <laughs> introduced legislation that would bring Washburn University into the state system and uh, oh, another piece of, of a piece of important legislation of which I was one of the prime sponsors, was a 40-year mandatory life sentence for first-degree murderers, and that has recently been enacted. Mm -hmm. um, another piece of legislation was uh, re uh, change, reduced rates, uh, income tax rates, uh, following uh, the federal tax reform. Mm -hmm. uh, Obviously, the legislation was passed a year or two later. We would not have had the windfall, yeah. but uh, I was I was a co-sponsor on 
that. Well, that's big legislation. A big thing, too. I'm afraid I've done a rather fuzzy job, but that's... No, you've done, done very well. I mean, just, just off the top of your head. Certainly those things are a matter of record. That's correct. I mean, at the time that uh, when we had no AIDS policy, for instance, policy mm -hmm. concerning AIDS, HIV, uh, the, the, I, I was one of the Senate sponsors on some what we consider was some rather important uh, legislation. Probably so your committee sponsored a lot of things, too. Oh, yes. Oh, committee sponsored, yes. Uh, for instance, uh, 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 one piece of uh, committee work was a bill that was enacted this past session on uh, workers' compensation, and that was uh, a bill that came out of the Labor Indu and Industry Committee, and as chairman of that committee, then I was responsible for leading the Senate floor debate on that. that that's <clears throat> labor and industry doesn't seem like the place that they would put a woman in. Uh, I don't believe they ever had. I, I was, I'm thinking you're probably the first. I haven't looked it up. It just. just I suspect I am the first, mm -hmm. and and I, I think some of those non-traditional roles uh, are, are are healthy. Uh, mm -hmm. You may be interested to know that uh, not only am I as a woman the chairman of labor and industry and small business, but my vice chairman is a woman, and the ranking minority member is a woman. <laughs> And I think that probably the men who have been running the labor and industry uh, uh, work in the, in, the, in the legislature are just shaking their heads. I suppose we have put a bit of a different perspective on it. One of the things that I think is extremely important is workforce training. Mm -hmm. And I have I, I've tried to bring that dimension into the Labor and Industry Committee, which is a committee that has really been... A, um, uh, they're kind of in the middle of labor and industry disputes. I don't think that the legislature should be an arena that hears those disputes mm -hmm. first, and I try not to let it be. But we are we, in that committee. Uh, we're talking about people. Mm -hmm. We're talking about uh, uh, of creating a good work environment for workers but also a good business climate for employers. And so in that respect, I think the addition of uh, that committee of small business legislation yeah. uh, is, is, is extremely important. And, and one of the pieces of small business legislation that did uh, get introduced into uh, our committee this year was a, a bill that, which provided a civil remedy for worthless checks, mm -hmm. which has for some time been a thorn in the sides mm -hmm. of businesses. Well, now, those sound like financial issues and everything. Are there any any issues that you think have been identified and sort of called women's issues that uh, you, were, as a woman legislator, were expected to take a leadership role in promoting or defending or defeating or whatever the case? Well, <clears throat> there may be some expectation that I would have taken a prime role in some of these pieces of legislation. And, uh, but I cannot say that I have. Okay. Uh, for instance, uh, in, in two or three instances, legislation that came through my Labor Industry and Small Business Committee during these past two years have been provisions in bills that would have provided uh, equity mm -hmm. on... I had to turn it over. I thought it was... provisions and bills that would provide or assure equity, uh, whether they be on commissions or um, advisory panels. Uh, I have not had any uh, pay equity mm -hmm. um, issues, but I not sure that I take a traditional woman's view on some of those issues and that I, I it, it's always been my fear that if we start legislating equity women stand to lose. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Well do you think other women 
or women legislators as a, as a group are expected to take a leadership role in some of these more, what some people would consider women's issues? I think that recently uh, women legislators have been expected to assume a position and take action on issues pertaining to abortion and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and choice. Mm -hmm. By other legislators, by your constituents, or who, who have that expectation, do you think? I don't believe it's by other legislators. I think it's um, more from groups, and so I even hesitate to say constituents. I think perhaps serving in the Senate, uh, I'm in a bit of a different situation than perhaps you'll find by visiting with House members. There aren't as many women in the Senate, and uh, the men, though there are some good old boys, I would not want to pretend that there are not. I think that the, that the majority of the men in the Senate have, have worked to include women in leadership roles and in prime positions of responsibility. Um, and in that respect, I think I probably would take a few steps backwards if I went, were only a woman's issue person. Yeah. That's a good, good way to put it. Are there any groups or informal or formal groups that you participate in besides the party? I mean, just while well, you have the delegation from Topeka. Yes, Shawnee County yeah. delegation I participate in. Are there any in. other groups like that that you participate in? Was there a Senate Women's Coalition this year? No, there was not a Senate Women's Coalition, and I, and I don't ex really expect there to be one, mm -hmm. at least for the next two years. I am get, going to go to a meeting in the middle of November in St. Louis which is, is bipartisan, but it, uh, it's a women's, um, what women legislators meeting. I have never done this before, but I uh, think that I will find it very informative most and, and very interesting. I'm looking forward to it. That sounds interesting. Is anyone else from here going? Yes, there are others going, both both senators and House members going from here. And it's just women? It's just women, women. Mm -hmm. that's correct. Oh. Do you have any particularly vivid memories of certain happenings or experiences or bills or debates or meetings? Oh yes, I kind of uh, my first amusing, and I it is amusing. I you will laugh, and I had to laugh. There was no other choice. When I my first year in the Senate, um, and not too long after I had been there. I was going to be responsible for carrying my first bill on the Senate floor. And um, I, I, it, it was, it's hard to anticipate exactly when that bill will come up because you never know how much debate there are going to be on bills uh, that were scheduled previously. And um, my bill was fairly close to the top of the calendar, so I expected it to come up pretty quick. Well, we got kind of bogged down on some issue. And, you know, I was a bit nervous, and I did have to go to the bathroom. And at that time, there was no women's lounge adjacent to the Senate. We had to walk out of the Senate and walk through the lobbyists uh, and, and, and uh, turn the corner to get to a two-stall women's restroom. Well, I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know, you know, I, I really felt the more I thought about it, the, the, the more urgent it seemed, <laughs> and yet I was afraid that my bill would come up. Well, as I said before, we kind of got bogged down, and I find, I turned to my seatmate, who's, who, who's a male, and I said, I'm going to go to the ladies' room. I just hope my bill doesn't come up. He said, okay. So I did this, and of course, worked through the lobbyists, and, and uh, got into the restroom, and the speaker does go into the restroom. Well, I had no more than gotten committed to this than I'll be darned, but the debate was over on the bill right oh my before mine, and my bill came up, and the chairman recognized uh, the senator from Shawnee, Senator Salisbury, to carry this bill. <laughs> well, I was dying, of course, and I, so I finished up and quickly, quickly, ran through all the lobbyists, which were, all of them, of course, had seen me go in the restroom, come out of the restroom. Some of my male friends and my female friends also were laughing and ran around the corner and came into the Senate. <laughs> of 
course, I mean, it was just obvious. Yeah. And I'm sure I was as red as can be. And since then, I have built a restroom adjacent okay. to the Senate, which does help. But that was my first oh my gosh. Uh, very amusing mm -hmm. moment. The second one that I, that I guess I have to laugh at was uh, there was a there was a bill on administrative rules and regulations, and the um, the senator who was supposed to carry that had preceded me as chairman of administrative rules and regulations, Senator Wirtz, and that bill had come out of his work, not any work that I had done as chairman, and uh, the bill came up and he was not in the Senate chamber, and the Senate president asked me if I would take a moment and look at the bill and, and uh, see if I could carry it on the Senate floor, which I did uh, take a real quick look at. It was kind of a thick bill. And I said, well, Mr. President, it appears to be just some technical changes in the laws. There doesn't appear to be, from what I can tell, anything of substance here. And one of the other senators uh, Rose and said, well, what is this part in the bill about farm wineries? Are those technical changes too? <laughs> so I said, Mr. President, I feel that I need to yield to somebody who has more knowledge of the issue in here besides me. But uh, we, we all just had to laugh. This. And so I learned, I learned then that it is very easy to say no to the president and when you don't have knowledge of it, there's no reason why you should feel compelled to assume something you don't, can't do. How many women were in the Senate when you first uh, were elected? There uh, were five of us. Uh, two Democrats who had served in the Senate. Uh, three of us were new. Another woman from Shawnee County, uh, Jean Hofer, was mm -hmm. elected the same time as I, and a senator from Johnson County, Audrey Langworthy, was elected the same time as I. So there were five. And how many are there now? I believe there are nine. There are nine. So I was thinking it was multiplying rather than just adding more. The numbers are getting a lot larger fast. Uh, how effective as a group do you think women legislators, well, in the Senate anyway, are? are? Is there a difference between effectiveness of the of the men and the men counterparts? Or I think there has been, yes. I I think for one thing, uh, men have had more opportunities to uh, get together um, outside yes. Senate work and share information, share camaraderie, and uh, form a, uh, let's say, a mutual respect or a mutual com something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I heard you mean. Uh, and I, I think that women have been isolated from that. Um, the women senators that I know, and I, maybe I should speak for myself, but I, I think this is generally true of the other women in the Senate. Uh, we're, we're not good old boys and we don't, we have not attempted to be. And to go out and uh, have some beers and, mm -hmm. and, and visit with the men just hasn't been something that we have done. Uh, we have had to be more creative in building a respect with our male colleagues. Now as women, I think we have had, we have easily been able to get together, whether uh, it might just be in our office, yeah. but just kind of kick our shoes off and, 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 and put our feet up, skirts and all. Uh, this yeah. is something we have been able to do as women, but it's, we've had to be a bit creative in doing this with men. And I feel after six years, uh, that I have gained some, uh, I think I have the respect. Mm -hmm. and, and, you think having colleagues. nine women uh, uh, has made a difference? I mean, the greater the number, the more this is going to change? I think perhaps it will. At first, uh, I noticed that uh, the presence of even five women seemed to be very threatening to some. 
-hmm. male senators. Mm -hmm. uh, and we certainly would not have gone out and formed our little clique or our little group uh, because that probably would have just exacerbated the mm -hmm. problem. Uh, but I do think that those same few that I'm talking about that felt threatened um, perhaps now are, have gained a greater respect of the power and the authority that women are able to demand. And I think perhaps the, the, the thing that, has, that assisted me most was this piece of legislation that was enacted by last year's legislature on workers' compensation. There were there were some provisions in there that were that that were were controversial, mm -hmm. and uh, they they were very difficult kind of worker employer kinds of issues, and some of the men even in this leadership in the house uh, were were willing to kind of cave in a bit early, mm -hmm. and I argue that that would be a mistake because that would uh, just it, it would it, it would just destruct the policy that was trying to be said we were trying to achieve a cost savings mm -hmm. and to to cave in was not going to, to to achieve what this legislation was all about and I, I I convinced the men both in the House and the Senate who were philosophically on my side of this that we would be better to just say we'll drop the legislation which had something of interest for those people who wanted to make these changes. I mean, they, they, they were going, everyone was going to lose if I allowed this mm -hmm. piece of legislation to drop, kind of. And I called their bluff on it, and I won. And, and I, I use this word I fairly loosely. Mm -hmm. I obviously wasn't, mm -hmm. can't take total responsibility for everything, but because I was responsible for all this and for structuring how it was to be done, I think I gained some mm -hmm. uh, respect in that way. And there have been others. Uh, this role in labor and industry has been probably the most, the most interesting in terms of, of gaining some real respect mm -hmm. from my colleagues. Another way I've been able to do it, of course, is through my work uh, in, in Ways and Means. I am responsible uh, for 18 agency budgets mm -hmm. myself. And some of them are, are very big, complex budgets, like uh, Winfield State Hospital, um, as as, an, as one example. And and there's some real policy decisions to be made uh, in that area. And uh, because I've been willing to do my homework and 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 to and to make a fair presentation of what I know, I, I I've, I've gained some respect in that way too. Oh, that's good. That's interesting. Oh, I'm going to ask you some questions now just about yourself and sort of how I feel like things. I've been talking about myself for some time. You have, but these are maybe more, more about your private life than your public life. Uh, you mentioned your father had been in the legislature. Yes. When was he? Uh, what was your maiden name? What was my, name? my maiden name was Lang. His name was Herbert Lang. And he was okay. elected at the same time that uh, Dwight Eisenhower was elected to the president. Very interesting. Uh, his, his father... Uh, before him had um, had served in both the House and, and the Kansas Senate. Right. His name was Henry Mosier Lang and he was elected from Russell. What year was did he serve? I, uh, that I, I can't recall offhand, mm -hmm. but he served several years in both the House and the Senate. My father served two terms, as I recall, in the Kansas House. Mm -hmm. uh, he was father of, of the Kansas Turnpike. Uh, he took a, 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 a lead in, in right-to-work legislation. Mm. He was very active in insurance legislation. Oh, that's interesting. Well, is he still alive? No, he's not. Was he alive? No, he, he alive? never oh, knew I was elected. <laughs> well, I know you, I've seen you, it's your mother. That yes, seen yes. You. Yeah. Well, that's something. But that's interesting that, do you remember his activity in the legislature? Did you, Oh yeah. how old were you? Well, I was... Uh, oh dear, now these questions are hard for me. I think I was just maybe in junior high school at that time. Uh, I served as a page when mm -hmm. he was there, and that was when there was a central um, what was, telephone operator. 
right outside mm. the house chamber, and that was my favorite job when I paged. I paged with the, you paged for a week at that time, <laughs> and I loved taking the telephone messages into the to the representatives. Also, uh, that. The, the lobbying at that time was much, much different. There were very few lobbyists, and the uh, party uh, a caucus frequently met uh, at a location outside of the state capitol, mm. and some of the people who remember my father and served in the legislature when he did remember going to Republican Party caucus at my parents' home. They also had a number of dinner parties that uh, entertained so uh, people legis remember legislators, him. they didn't. Uh, oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, they rem and remembered my mother also. Uh, they didn't. There weren't. There was not the kind of entertainment and the kind of uh, entertainment schedule for uh, mm -hmm. legislators at then. The legislators that there is themselves now. did some of the. Inter That's correct. Well, the, certainly the local legislators uh -huh. did. Mm -hmm. My father always said that he that he really spent more money than than he made. Mm -hmm. so, so well, imagine later. so. And I can understand why. <laughs> well, now, you were born here in Topeka. I was Topeka born in, I was born, no, I'm not well, a native were, Kansan. Oh, I was good. born in New York City and moved here. My parents moved here when I was a year old. Oh, my father's a native Kansan. He is native. Yes. They were in New York. Yes. Um, now, you were, let's see, six years ago. How old were your children when you were in the legislature? You said you're, you, when you ran your... Do you have one? How do you I have, well, my children, children were born in 1963 and 1966. Okay. So, uh, they were 86, my school. daughter, oh yes, my daughter would have been 20 in 86. So, you see, she was going to college in 1984. She, she was a freshman uh, at KU when mm -hmm. I was, when, during my first uh, legislative mm -hmm. session. Uh, she did work in my campaign before going, and my son is, is then was two years ahead of her. So both of them were in Lawrence at KU. I see. Did I they both campaign work in your campaign? Yes. You? Yes. Yeah. How did they feel about you running? Do you think? Oh well, my, they my daughter particularly uh, is very pleased. She remembers uh, what, remembered four years before that when I had been called to uh, file for the state board of education. And she had gone down to the state house with me mm -hmm. at uh, at the time that I filed for the first time to run for public office, mm -hmm. and and that memory is very vivid with her. So she has always been very enthusiastic about my holding office. Both my children have held office uh, in school also. Oh, I see. Well, that's interesting. Yes, at that time she she ran successfully for the for the uh, freshman class treasurer. Mm -hmm. You think they'll follow you and want to be in the house? Of I wouldn't the be. Senate? I wouldn't be one bit surprised. I think there's some characteristic like that. That's what we're, why we ask that question to see if there is anything. It's traceable. Any patterns there? Anything? Well, you grew up. You were born in New York City, but you moved back to Kansas right away. How would you describe your growing up here? What? High school, what schools did you go to? Oh, I always went to public schools. I always went to public school. I went to Clay School, which is now closed. I went to Roosevelt Junior High School, which is now <laughs> torn down. I went to Topeka High School, which has been refurbished. <laughs> um, the only time I went away to school was my first three years in college. I went to a girls' school in Virginia, and they came back and finished at KU. Uh, as as a student and growing up. Uh, First of all, I, I was a very athletic person, so I was always in athletics from uh, grade school on. Um, in high school, though, I was very involved in high school activities and in elected, elected positions. Political type positions. Yes, so. yes, for which, for which I campaigned and had to be elected Ooh. first by my class as, as a sophomore representative and then uh, by the whole school in holding them. Do you relate that back to your father's uh, activities with the legislature? Or? It was never conscious, but mm -hmm. I'm sure subconsciously it seemed like a very natural thing for me to do. Mm -hmm. I never, I have never felt that I was in a foreign, it was in foreign territory. Mm -hmm. Well, what did you major in in college? 
I majored in English literature and American history. I had a double major, neither one of which equipped me for the world <laughs> of work or for the political arena, for that matter. Well, maybe not. <laughs> well, did you did you work then after you graduated from college? Or? I helped uh, to open Vivian's gift shop uh, for my first year out of college. Uh, at that first year, I also uh, joined. Uh, the Junior League of Topeka, and then I was married a year after school. And I make the point about the Junior League of Topeka because it more than anything else is responsible for what I'm doing today. I, for the first many, many years of my life, I made uh, volunteerism a career. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I know that because at one time I was interviewed about the various volunteer positions I had held, most of which were in policy making. I, hmm. it, although I did some one-on-one -on -one volunteer work, a good deal of what I did was in either initiating something or providing the policy and oversight for it. But when I was interviewed for some of the volunteer positions I'd held, uh, I was asked to estimate how many hours a week mm -hmm. I spent in volunteer activity. I had to do a little work, a little thinking and calculation, but I came up with 30 hours a week. Oh my goodness. So for me, raising uh, young children and, and my volunteer activity and, and the support role I tried to provide for my husband was definitely time and a half. Mm -hmm. That sounds like... Well, how old were you when you were first elected to the Senate? Well, I'm 51 now, and that's so... Actually, my election would have been seven years ago. Mm -hmm. well, the election would have been 1984. The election yeah. took place in 84. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and I was born in 39. All right. And well, you can put pencil yeah, and paper I, that. Uh, exactly, because <laughs> I think we probably both graduated in 1956 from high school. I graduated from 57. I was the class 57, of 57 right? and college class of 61. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. right. uh -huh. Exactly. Right. Okay. How would you describe your family with your parents? And did you have brothers and sisters? I had a sister. I still have <laughs> a sister. Uh huh. And a younger sister, three and years younger than I. What What type of family activities did you do? What kind of emphasis did your parents place? And my father, particularly, uh, was extremely involved uh, in, in in community affairs and statewide affairs. Uh, I just, I can't even mention a position hmm. that he didn't uh, hold in that, in that regard. And so my mother took very much, you know, a support role in that. She was definitely a full-time mother. Um, and we, really did a lot of support role for with my father too. My father was very close to us, however. Mm -hmm. He was he, he spent a lot of time in father kind of activity. Um, well, he probably you probably knew what he was doing in these public roles too then. Uh, oh I can't say that I really did. You we didn't he was we doing didn't it. really sit at the table and uh, I, prop, I don't think any more than any, any other family. I, I mean, I, I can't sit here and say, oh yes, I remember we used to sit at the table and talk about affairs of state and, and public policy and so on. No, we really didn't. We talked about more personal things, so I didn't really glean any insights mm -hmm. from that. Now, you lived at home. I ask this question because if you're outside of Topeka, this is important. It probably isn't for you in your case. You lived at home, and so you didn't have to kind of leave your family or home or anything. You, you just stay. Yeah, what do you mean by well, While you were in the legislature, did you, uh, you, you commuted back and forth, but you stayed here in your own home? Oh, yes. Uh, be, be, being, uh, living here in the capital city uh, was and continues to be extremely important to me. Although my children had, had gone to Lawrence to school, um, I still put the mothering very high on my list. It means a 
great deal to me. Now my children are, are married and, and neither one of them are even in state right now. Mm. They're both living out of state. But it means a great deal to me to come home in the evenings to my husband. Uh, I cannot overstress that. I don't know if I'm made up differently from other people or not, but I'm, I'm not positive that I would have as much interest in serving in the legislature if I were commuting. Good, good question. <laughs> yeah, that was a real good question yeah. for me. <laughs> Do you think that, um, in your case anyway, that there was a cost to your family for you to serve in the legislature? Absolutely none. Right. Absolutely none. It has actually, um, I think my husband would tell you firsthand that he, he feels extremely proud of the work that I am doing. He feels very much a part of it. Uh, because I am able to come home, I, I, I'm able to talk to my closest constituent on an ongoing basis. Now sometimes we, we, we have little home debates on some of the issues and, 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 and I've been known to come around and he's been known to come around. Mm -hmm. um, he, he really enjoys it. He, he, he has a much greater uh, academic knowledge of uh, political science than, than do I. He was very involved in political science in college. And uh, so that has certainly enhanced my appreciation and my knowledge of what I'm doing. Uh, but well, he's fortunate. Though. Yeah, we, we are, I would say we are really doing this from, mm -hmm. from, from going door to door to really discussing the issues and having an understanding of the impact they're going to make outside uh, the halls of the, of, of, mm -hmm. of the legislature. Yes, which is important. Well, now, do you feel like your experience in the legislature has changed the way your friends, if not your family, treat you, see you? Uh... Yes, it has changed. It has changed a great deal. Um, some of this it, some of it is good and some of it is maybe not so good. Um, having grown up in Topeka, I guess, and having been involved in, in, in volunteer activity to the extent that I was, I was very fortunate. John and I have been very fortunate to have a, a, an awful lot of close friends. Mm -hmm. uh, even more because our children went to school here locally. Mm -hmm. um, French friends have, have, have been a very important part of our lives. We enjoy entertaining, we enjoy being with them. The, my legislative activity has restricted that a great deal. Mm. Now, who is to say what happens when, when other people get involved too? And some of my friends have also uh, taken roles, whether they are, are elected roles or, or roles in, in the business community mm -hmm. uh, that that they didn't have, uh, you know, before mm -hmm. I ran for office, if we can use that as the benchmark. Um, so who's to, who's to know? But 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 I but I miss uh, seeing my friends as much as I used to. Um, on the other hand, uh, I I feel fortunate that these same friends seem to have a high regard for what I'm doing. They are very mm. supportive. Uh, when I do have a chance to visit with them, they make me feel like a million dollars. They, they call me for advice about issues that are on the ballot or mm. things that they read about in the newspaper. And that makes me that makes me feel very good. They seem to put a lot of faith in my ability to research the issues and the decisions that I make. Oh, that's interesting. Well, do you feel like your how do you feel this experience has changed you as, just as a person? privately or publicly or whatever, do you think it's made a difference? Well, it has certainly expanded my world and the appreciation for the diversity in my hometown. Mm -hmm. I, I felt like I had had so many experiences 
prior to running for public office and that I had been so much a part of the city of Topeka. But this has expanded my, my, my knowledge beyond what I would ever have expected. It probably also, uh, if, I, if I, to be very honest about it, has, ex has um, given me the knowledge that I had greater capabilities than I would have given myself credit for. And I've never been, I hope I've been humble, but I don't feel like I've ever sold myself mm -hmm. short. But I've never been afraid to be thrust into some new positions. Um, I know frequently when I go in, I am turning a corner and am not positive what's going to be around that corner. But it all seems to have worked out, and I have seemed to be able to have risen to the occasion. That's a good result. Then. And I have not been terrified at failing, because sometimes I've been more successful than others. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think that I think now of the times that I that I speak that speaking being very important not only on the Senate floor but before groups and on one to one. When I was in high school, I was a, on the varsity debate team, um, and probably more than any of my colleagues at Topeka High School. I was the one that seemed to have to get the four, which is the <laughs> lowest score. <laughs> and I will tell you that uh, I certainly would not have had a lot of confidence in my ability to speak. Now, I'm not trying to misrepresent my capability there. It may, mm -hmm. It's not my strongest suit. But on the other hand, you know, those, th those experiences have built, and in fact, I don't know that I would get a four if I were to go back now. <laughs> well, that's interesting. That probably should be a question we ask. Is it, if you were, you know, how many of the people in the in the House and Senate have been in the debate? That, did that prepare you? Well, for confidence? I'll, I'll tell you. I don't know that debate is maybe debate is only important in that it's competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, forensics which or, would, it could yeah. include debate, you know, could demonstrate uh, the, the, the skills that you may have gained mm -hmm. in those kinds of activities or just simply your natural talents. I think the important thing with debate and forensics and athletics and what they have in common is that they are competitive and you are put mm -hmm. into a competitive arena. Now in sports, uh, frequently, uh, and still, you know, women, you are in women's sports. Mm -hmm. When you are in debate, then it was not a woman's mm -hmm. world at all. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, you, if you were on a varsity debate team, as a woman, you were probably the only woman mm -hmm. on that varsity debate team. Mm -hmm. So that throws you into a different arena. That might, might be the difference rather than the debate activity itself. But the arena it may have. It may have. I, I, interesting. Is there anything I haven't asked you that you would like to tell me about yourself or your experience in the legislature or anything remotely related to that? I guess I, nothing occurs to me. Nothing occurs to me right now. I would say that, I guess I would just add, because you had asked about the expectations of my role as a woman and, and, and you know, to pick up the cudgel for women's issues, I would say that I'm called on more to be a player, an mm -hmm. active participant in my party than I am in what some people term to be women's issues 
which I never think of as women's issues, but I think of as people issues. Yeah. That's a good conclusion. <laughs>